So we're talking about your story and dealing with your shame. How do we get to a state of forgiveness for ourselves? So forgiveness is, is an action item. It does not happen without some measure of action. So, so what ends up happening as men, as people, is we're waiting for this feeling that we forgive ourselves. And what's interesting is it never comes. And we think that it gets lesser or that we're on to forgiveness because we are able to take that stuff and repress it and put it away so we don't have to deal with it. But then something triggers it that brings it back up. Some memory, something someone says, something you see in public, whatever the case may be, it re-triggers that in you. So forgiveness is an action. It's a choice. Forgiveness is something that you choose. I forgive myself for the things that I've done in the past. It doesn't mean that I don't have some sort of emotion about those things. It doesn't mean that I'm not culpable for my actions in the past. I am. doesn't matter what other people are doing or not doing, I am solely responsible for the decisions that I made in my past that did not serve me and did not serve others. And I'm not going to beat myself up about it. I'm going to forgive myself. I don't think around, sit around thinking I'm terrible or bad or agonizing over the mistakes I've made. I recognize that I made those mistakes. There's the reasons I made those mistakes, not excuses, not excuses, reasons that I made those mistakes. And our job is to deal with those reasons and work through them. And that's essential. That's absolutely essential. And if you can do that, if you can take those steps, you'll make progress and you'll get to where you need to be. But forgiveness is something that you do. It is an action that you take. You have to work to do that. Now, part of that is loving yourself, choosing to forgive yourself and not waiting for some sort of feeling to come along where you're like, oh, I now forgive myself because that's never going to happen, by the way, not, not usually. So the approach has to be one of, I see myself and I forgive myself. Dealing with your shame is accepting who you were, who you are currently, and recognizing that you're not that person anymore. You're not that person anymore. You were, right? but that person's gone. They don't exist anymore. The person that made the decisions that you made around acting out and hurting others and hurting yourself. As you move away from the behavior, you start to realize that you're not that person. That's a whole nother person. The person's gone. There may be some reflections in you of that individual, but you're not that person anymore. The story's not finished, right? The story up until this point has not been great. It's not all bad, but it's got some bad decisions in there. But the story's not finished. In fact, there's a decent amount of stories still left to write. So sitting here and wasting time, sitting in the mausoleum of your past, is not going to make anything different. It's not going to make your life better. It's not going to make you a better man, better partner. The world's not going to benefit from you agonizing over your past. We, want, we can be remorseful about our past. Absolutely. And should be. We should be. But forgiveness is something that you need to do to move forward. And unless you do, you will hit the ceiling because you will keep yourself imprisoned in that space. So what I want you to do is I want you to get to a point of saying, I forgive myself. Start your morning now. Hey, I know I've made some really bad mistakes. I'm a good man who has made some poor decisions, but I forgive myself and I endeavor to do better. I will do better. And if you approach it in this way, it'll start to sink in, but it requires a measure of consistency. You have to step into that space it has nothing to do with how you feel. You may not feel like you forgive yourself. You may not even feel like saying it. But if you don't, you're just holding on, beating yourself up. You not forgiving yourself is you staying in a cage, right? It's you sitting in a cage where there is no lock. You're choosing to sit in there. You're sitting there, oh my gosh, my past. You can get out of that cage. You can go, yeah, I made some some poor decisions there, but um, I'm not that man anymore. You can sit there and beat yourself up and people will walk through your life watching you beat yourself up. You do a disservice to yourself and you do a disservice to your partner. When you do this, you are robbing. If you're in a relationship, you're robbing your partner by doing this. So let me put this in perspective. You hurt your partner by your actions, and now you're continuing to hurt them by not forgiving yourself and moving on from your past and being wholly present for them, right? That's what's going on. When we don't forgive ourselves, we hold ourselves back. We hold our relationships back. We're not fully present inside that space for our person and for ourselves. 
for ourselves. So dealing with your shame is understanding that shame and guilt have never done anything for us. I remember when I was talking to George and I was talking about my shame and how guilty I felt and all this stuff. He's like, and he just knows so nonchalantly. He listened and then he goes, yeah, shame and guilt has never really done anything for me. I was just like, my head exploded. It was just, it was that simple. It was like, that's interesting. They haven't. So why am I investing so much time into it? They haven't helped me. So what does help me? Forgiveness, moving forward in my life, being present. That's what helps me. That's what helps my person, right? Just so nonchalant. Yeah, shame and guilt never done anything for me. Just blew it off. Like it was no issue. And it just jolted me free of that. I was like, if this guy who struggled with the same stuff I've struggled with, done the same things, can say that and really feel that way, why can't I? Why can't I? And I realized the only person keeping me in that prison was myself. 